Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this edition of Cyrus Blair Presents. We're here today with Larry Cedar to talk to him not only about his journey to be able to bring some great stories to life, but also tell you about some of his current projects that he definitely wants you to know about. And we also will let you know how you can stay connected with him as well. But, Larry, thank you so much for the time today. Really appreciate it. It is an honor and privilege to meet you in the top two finals. <laughs> well, look, I know, you know we're definitely going to be talking about uh, one of your current projects. She sings to the stars for sure. But I definitely want to talk about the experience of doing what you love, Larry, and seeing the response. I mean, there's no greater feeling for me to know that the work that I'm doing actually matters to me and so many others. I mean, what has it been like for you to do the same thing? I think you just hit the nail on the head. I think there's no greater joy than doing what you love. Yeah. Um, I think there's no greater privilege or honor to do what you love. Mm -hmm. I do love acting passionately. Uh, I came very close to not being able to be an actor. I was supposed to go to law school. I was in, uh, accepted to Hastings Law School and just at the last minute I applied to acting school. And, uh, through a very helpful teacher named Gary Gardner, who since passed away, I got into the program, and uh, it's been just sheer pleasure ever since. Yeah, so. yeah. You know, it takes a lot of courage, Larry. We've been talking about this a lot during my visit here to Los Angeles because I think for people, no matter where they live in the world, sometimes we have this idea that the way we feel, that what we're experiencing, is different somewhere else. Would you agree that it's a daily thing for all of us to allow our courage to, to help us and not allow the fear to stop us in doing what we love? Absolutely. Uh, uh... I've been thinking about this a lot yesterday. There's an expression that always comes into my mind, and that is ignore the signs. Yeah. Because the signs are always stop, run, don't. And uh, you have to pretty much ignore the signs every day and say, I'm going to bull through anyway, because something inside you is telling you this is what I'm supposed to do. And push through the obstacles, push through the fear, and keep going. And yes, I think everyone faces the same challenges. Anyone who, who has, uh, is inspired to do something they love, I think, faces those same challenges. Uh, my daughter is a painter in New York. My other daughter is a filmmaker in New York and they, they face struggles daily and they call me and they say, what do I do about this situation or that situation? I would say 90% of the time, my advice to them is hang in there. Just mm -hmm. keep going. You hit a tough spot, push through it, move on to the next and until you hopefully get to the next joyful moment and so on, you know, but you, you got to take the whole package. Exactly. What a, what a powerful thing. And I think what a great reminder for us. So for yourself, I mean, she sings to the stars is one, is one of your, your new projects. I yeah. know it's one that you're passionate totally. about. Tell yeah. us about this story and how it came about. Oh, so much in, in life just comes out of nowhere. Um, I just finished a one man show uh, over at the Colony Theater in Los Angeles, in Burbank, where I work quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I got a phone call from a woman named uh, Jennifer Corcoran, who is the writer director of the film. Mm -hmm. I had worked on a film the previous year in New Mexico called Zero. Uh, and one of the producers on that film was a man named Jake Pocluda. He was now working on Jennifer's film. Mm -hmm. I don't know if an actor fell out or what happened, but they were two weeks away from filming, which is pretty close to the casting. Sure. And they needed uh, a lead actor, this character named Lyle. And uh, she said, would I be interested? In? Uh, you know, it's just uh, interested. It's like a dream come true. I mean, it's New Mexico. It's, I read the script. It's a fascinating story. I love the character. It was a lead role. And um, it was just, everything about it was fantastic. So I said, absolutely yes. Really not knowing what I was getting into, other than the fact that this opportunity had availed itself. Uh, went out there to New Mexico, um, was welcomed with open arms into the production. Uh, took immediately, uh, immediate liking to the character Lyle. He's a lovable loser, barely lovable, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but he's uh, a, um, a down, in, down on his luck magician uh, who's really not very good, kind of good. He's had a somewhat of successful career playing a lot of birthday parties and small events. He had a girl who he really loved and all at once everything falls apart. He loses his the jobs. He, his girlfriend dumps him. He's got a slew of parking tickets that he just can't afford to pay off. So he says, I gotta get out of Los Angeles. And he books a gig, which may be his very last gig, in a little shopping mall in Las Vegas, New Mexico. Not the big, exciting Las Vegas, mm -hmm. but Las Vegas, New Mexico. On his way there, with his last $20, he commits a petty crime at a gas station. It's just going from bad to worse. He thinks he sees uh, a UFO. It takes him off the road he's supposed to be on, down this dirt path into uh, this kind of Indian reservation of sorts, and his car breaks down. So he's completely lost, no, he doesn't have any water in his radiator, can't do anything. Long story short, he goes looking for help and meets a woman named, uh, well, I said, Mabel, I'm sorry, Mabel, I started to say her real name, Fanny, who's an actual, <laughs> um, oh gosh, is she a Hopi Indian? I'm gonna get the tribe wrong. But she does live on a reservation in New Mexico, they, uh, Jennifer found her and cast her. Mm -hmm. And she's a woman who lives in this very magical world of her own where she, she really does real magic. She is in touch with the universe and 
may or may not be communicating with uh, UFOs. You're not really sure. But she lives in this little hut. There's no water, and he doesn't know how she survives. And he's kind of stuck with her, living with her for a while until he figures out what to do. In comes her, her grandson, who's bringing her water, who it turns out is the gentleman I committed the crime against about two miles back. Wow. So we're in this little pressure cooker of a situation. He thinks I'm a crook. I want to get out of there. She's trying to get me to settle down. And for over the course of a couple days, Lyle, my character, is forced to kind of let go of all of his anger, all of his tension, all of his fear, all of his, just his traditional way of thinking about life and kind of submit to this magical world that she lives in. If you can imagine, she lives in a, a little hut in the middle of the desert with this huge monument structure. It's actually Cabazon, New Mexico. It looks like a mountain from Close Encounters. Wow. She lives at the foot of this thing. And at night she goes out and sings to the stars. She sits at night and sings and he watches her and he doesn't know what she's doing, but over the course of a day or so, a lot of things happen which force everyone's perspectives to change. And in particular Lyle, he's forced to kind of give up his way of thinking, a citified way, a cityfied way, I think, and I would say he's in a hurry, he's anxious, he's angry, he distrusts and all that has, he has to let go of that and, and give into this magical world. And she shows him magic and restores his faith in magic and allows him to kind of continue on with his life in a whole new light, a whole new vein. And it's a beautiful story. I think it's a metaphor for, for hum, humanity, people in general, how we get caught up in, in certain structures, certain ways of looking at life, certain ways, rigid ways of, of dealing with people and, and ideas and emotions, and we just can't let go of them. And then suddenly life will force you, force you to let go, force you to see things a, a, a different way. And it's scary because right. you have to let go of the things you're comfortable with, the ways you do things. And he, but then you see a whole other side to the universe, and in doing so, you see that there's so much more, and, and there actually is hope and possibility and potentials that you were never even aware of. So it's a, it's a great resolution, but like most things in life, he has to go through hell to get there. It's, right. He's not happy. Yeah. Uh, you, know, so. you know, it's so interesting in hearing you talk about it. You can tell the excitement you have yeah. for the role. Yeah. Do you think because it is so much of how all of us are in life, Larry? Oh, absolutely. I think Jennifer, who has a long, lengthy resume of experience working in the theater, uh, she has a great dramatic sensibility. She structured this piece very much uh, with humanity's, you know, kind of hu human nature in mind. She understands that. And when we'd be in a scene and, and I was confused as to how to play it, she would very quickly say, oh, well, that's this. And I'd go, oh, of course, I see where that's coming from. She understands human nature, uh, and she understood what was in play in this story, the three forces. I mean, Mabel, the Indian woman's grandson, is also very angry. We're two angry men. You know, he for his mm -hmm. reasons and I for mine. And we're at war with each other, and we're at war with our circumstances, both of us. We're coming from different places. And she, in her really quiet, still, patient way, guides us into a kind of inner peace, which neither of us has ever had. Wow. And uh, it's just a beautiful story. I, I so related to it because living in Los Angeles, any big city, you have your, your share of angst, your share of frustrations. And uh, I know for myself, if I had to let go of everything I'm doing and just kind of just be, and just kind of see what happens, I'd just go like, well, that's terrible. And I won't have any control of my life. But that's what happens. And then I saw in this movie how how beautifully that can open you up, you know, perspectives and everything. And she's She's brilliant. She's a wonderful director, a wonderful writer. Um, with her brother Jonathan, they're planning on a series of films, kind of based upon uh, women's women's issues. Uh, in particular, this film is about Fanny and her strength as a woman and how she guides us somewhat lost men right. <laughs> into a, a, a more open vision. And, and I think her next two films will also be of a, a similar theme. So uh, I, I, she's she's one of the, she's maybe one of the best directors I've ever worked with because she mm -hmm. understands story. And she understands how the acting process works. Right. A lot of directors, they know what they want, but they don't know how to get you there or what to tell you. I, I guess through her experience in theater, she just knows what to say to help you understand what she's trying to achieve. Right. And uh, I was so grateful to her. It was such a gift yeah. to be called to do that film. It was such a gift. 
What an amazing thing. And what a gift this conversation, Larry, has been for us, for sure. I really appreciate the time. It's so great to be able to, 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 be able to meet you in person, yes, definitely during too. our visit here in Los Angeles. Last question I have for you, then we're going to let our viewers know how they can stay connected with you. I know you mentioned about the advice you give to your own children sure. about sticking it out. Yeah. Is that what you'd say to anybody out there who has a goal or dream that they're wondering if they should keep going for it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there was a book I read once uh, that I still read occasionally. Uh, you know, there's a lot of books in the philosophy of life. And one of the things it said is you have to accept the whole package. You want this wonderful vision of yours. But you have to accept that everything has its opposite. And as great as that will be, there's a dark side to that. And you have to be willing to take the bad with the good. So when difficulties come, you have to say, I accept that as part of this process. And I will, if I can accept that, then I'll be ready for the good. So absolutely, I, I say, if you have a dream, and, and it's a reasonable dream, <laughs> you know, and you really feel like you, you have a shot at it, then tenacity, uh, grit, uh, hope, positivity, it sounds cliche, but very much necessary. Mm -hmm. I know as, as an actor, I've been doing this for coming up on 40 years. Uh, I've certainly had my shares of ups and downs, and the only way I ever pull myself out of the real lows is by saying, well, you know, that's just part of it, and let's get ready for the next, you know, up. Right. And uh, that gets you through it. You exactly. gotta keep. You gotta keep positive. There you go. And yeah. you're hearing it from someone who definitely knows firsthand. So, Larry, how can our audience stay connected with you? Well, I have a website, uh, LarryCedar.com, L-A-R-R-Y-C-E-D-A-R.com, www.LarryCedar.com. Um, I try to keep that up to date, but just like everyone these days, the most recent work I do, the most recent projects, I usually post on Facebook. Uh, which is just Facebook, you know, dot com slash Larry Cedar. I'm on Twitter, uh, trying to get into Instagram, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm on two pages on Facebook, my, my professional page and my personal page, and they sure. both have similar information. That's the best way. And you can always reach me uh, via my website, uh, you know, at Larry Cedar at LarryCedar.com. Yeah. I'd love to hear from you. Well, Larry, thank you so much for being a part of our visit here to Los Angeles and looking forward to our next conversation together. Likewise with you. Pleasure. And we thank you, our viewers, for joining us for another great segment of Cyrus Web Presents.